everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Ramble On Movie Review. I am Vlad St. Valentine, and with me is the human representation of Freakazoid, Mr. Joseph Bowen. What's going on? Not much. I like that. I'll take that. Yeah. Uh, Joseph was actually kind enough to realize that we needed a higher production value on the show, and as kind of a, not really a traditional movie review channel, more of a, a video blog sort of thing, or video uh, podcast almost sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I like to think of it more of like a talk show type thing. And Joey decided that we needed our own band. So play us in Joey. Now the advantage of that is I don't have to make annoying banter with it afterwards. Nope. Not at all. So that's good. It is what it is. Uh, we're on production. Of course, is the host with Ramosis, Mr. Caden Ramos. How's it going? Pretty good, man. Just hanging out, watching Joey buy things to put on camera that are green. Yep. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> I, yeah. I mean, I didn't think about the green until it was too late. But I, was like, I, I walked out of the store with the green stuff. So I was like, eh, well, whatever. We'll fix it in post. <clears throat> well, everyone came out tonight to do our punishment, our pay-per-view punishments. We are one behind on because of, uh, the weather and other conditions and people's cars being broken and every day, every, every bit of life just befalling one of us each week, it seems. Uh, but this week we were, we were supposed to do a double feature of Garfield tale of two kitties. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I chose that movie. I'm like, there's no way I'm going to win. I was going to say Garfield too. And then I got the message I won. I was like, oh, hell, we got to watch Garfield. <laughs> but since Reggie uh, chumped out on us once again, we are stuck with uh, having to postpone our punishment videos once more. So we thought we'd do what we did last time. We had to postpone a punishment video, which was do a movie in one of my favorite series of movies, Puppet Master. And I promised we would get to Puppet Master 2, this batshit insane movie that has got nothing to do with the rest of the series. And damn it, we are here. Because this movie has got several things in it that are actually key to the Puppet Master franchise and things that should be lauded, but nothing in it goes along with the rest of the series. I don't know the series. So um, this is all I know is what we just watched. I thought you had seen the first one. It's just been a while. It's been a long time. Yeah, I don't really remember the first one too well. It's the same kind of plot. A group of people go to the hotel and a dead guy kills them by using the puppets. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, if you watch a review on it, you'll, you'll be able to see. Yeah, if you watch some of the videos on this channel, maybe you might actually, you know, you know, know what's going on. Just saying. Good point. So we start this movie off with the puppets digging up Andre Toulon, who apparently was big buried in a coffin that resembles a giant chest. Like he's like, I want to be buried in a coffin that resembles my puppet's chest or Samsonite luggage. Yeah. Well, he apparently was just buried right outside the hotel. Like they didn't bother to ship his body back. Like, yeah. Yeah. There's a hope. There's a cemetery there. There's no, yeah. no, there's not even a cemetery. Do you see the cemetery? Yeah. They just took Grandpa out back in one of his trunks and threw him in a fucking hole. No, there's a cemetery. There's, they showed, like, headstones. and Did they? Yeah, yeah. there's some headstones. I, I didn't even yeah. see yeah, that. Even, they, I think, even I think the, all the headstones just had just, one name on them. I don't think any of them had, like, first and last I name. I thought they just threw Pop on a ditch behind the, behind the dining room. No, hall. even even He the, had a good run. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> How would they know? <laughs> like, no one came to claim him in 20 days, so... We're just gonna bury him in the backyard with the dogs and the turtles. Well, yeah, they keep the they keep the froze <laughs> they keep the bodies that are lost and found in the freezer. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. After twenty days, they're not claimed. They get yeah. buried in their own suitcases. He was still in the fr okay. <laughs> At the end of that movie, yeah, I forgot movie. about that. Homeboy is still in there with the frozen vegetables. Yep. <laughs> yeah, his sister forgot about him too. Yeah, but the the puppets wait too long up. They dig him up and I. Again, it looks like they just woke him up at the the 
the hotel cemetery that they have out back because why not, right? Well, you know, it's over there kind of by the tennis court and the swimming pool and the cemetery. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's one of the, the many leisures. Well, high-end high end hotels like this will frequently have all the amenities. Oh, yeah, even... And a, especially since, like, the interior of this place looks like it's frequented by nothing but old people, they are likely to die while staying there. And because of their likelihood to die... You got to have your own personal cemetery. You have to. Yeah. Yeah. So, and like the, the, and if you get like the package deal with the hotel, the plot is not that expensive. Shouldn't be. Like, no, you can get like a, you can get a room, a plot and be shoved into your own suitcase and buried for under a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, easy. Yeah. And that's, that's a deal you just, you and can't And if you time your death just right, you still got the continental breakfast. Oh yeah. That's a good way to go. Oh yeah, man! Uh, a bagel, a stale bagel, and an orange that you're not gonna actually eat. You know, and you might peel a little bit of it, but then you remember that you fucking hate oranges, and peeling them's a pain in the ass. And so you just kind of leave the peel lying about with the orange. You also got the waffle maker and stuff like that. Oh, you're you're going to you're not in any continent. Wait, what fancy place for you that had a waffle maker? Every continental breakfast I ever saw. Like, if it was a good continental breakfast, yeah. you got the individual packs of cereal. Oh, they had those two before I went, yeah. That was, that, was, that was when you got a good continental breakfast. Other than that, it was like a brown banana, an apple, an orange, and some stale-ass bagels that I'm pretty sure all of it was there from the day before and not changed out. So, we they, get... They wake up the guy. They wake up Andre Toulon, the puppet master, who... With in, a rancid eggnog. Uh, that woke the dude. According yeah. to my notes, rancid eggnog wakes the dude. Okay, so the plot. Question here, mark. The plot here is basically this: uh, they, the puppets, are starting the the serum that's used to bring them back to life to reanimate them is starting to wear off. They need more, so they dig up the puppet master, Andre Toulon, the one that gave them life in the first place. To be like, hey man, it's been as he keeps saying, another fifty years, another fifty years. If they use the serum, it'll keep them going for another fifty years. So I'm guessing it's supposed to be wearing off because, I mean, if it was, you know, uh, 1943 or so when this ha- when uh, when this, this happened or uh, the late 40s, I guess, by that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, it's 50 years of the late 90s. So. Well, this was shot. In ni- this was put, put out in 90. So, yeah, they're like, oh, we got five or six more years until we we go inert. Uh, so yeah, yeah, and they have to gather up all the brains. So, yeah, it would be a good enough time to. So yeah, more this years is something to that's, make more movies too. Yeah. yeah. So this is something else that's never established in any other films. The the juice basically, I think later on is looking kind of like a reanimator, just kind of a clear green liquid, mm-hmm. and it's nothing sinister. There's no child brains <laughs> staring at you know. Um, not that that little bastard didn't deserve it. Like he totally did. Playing Indiana Jones without a hat, what kind of cocksucker does that? Um, so. Yeah, for that Whipping reason, that, poor that shirtless toy. Yeah, for that reason and that reason alone, that he dressed him real sexy, like too. That seven year old child deserved to be roasted alive. Yeah, that that's like what five out of the the seven signs of a serial killer. So Torch actually did us a favor. Oh yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah, you're probably right. That kid probably would have climbed a bell tower, and we don't need that to happen again. All right, what did we get? We haven't even started this movie. Yet. Yeah, yeah, we like did. We uh, into... <sighs> we got the rancid eggnog. Okay, yeah. So think about, all right. So things that have changed. Andre Toulon wakes up looking like the Invisible Man raided Doctor Doom's wardrobe. Yes. Or no, the first thing we see is his hands. He looked like Doctor Claw. Doctor Claw. Just, yeah. Ah, could you catch it? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So as far as things that this <clears throat> this movie does that no other movie that's not in continuity with any other Puppet Master <clears throat> movie is you have the stuff looking like the disgusting eggnog. The so the premise is we didn't even get to this we we derailed ourselves is they want to you know, they were wear the the power was wearing off the mm-hmm. the the juice was wearing off so they bring Andre Toulon back to life who had blown his damn head off so I'm guessing those those wrappings and that hat were to keep his you know w- his w- head from not whistling um, he wasn't running <laughs> just, he's on the beach or on the little on those cliffs there's there's oh, winds yeah, there's all over wind. those cliffs yeah. Um, surprised he didn't catch his cape and blow his bony ass away. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh, I guess he's just full of embalming fluid and worms at this point. So True. 
but they they bring him back in order to make more of the 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 serum, and he's like, but he seemed to be kind of bartered with him. It's like, don't worry, I'll bring you guys back to your old forms, or like, does that mean rejuvenate them and make them healthy again as the puppets? Because he kind of says at one point in time, we'll be our traveling review again. So I guess they just want to keep going on as the puppets and not be get put back into giant creepy marionette bodies right. also. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't really uh get much into that. It is a little convoluted, I guess. It was. Yeah. It was, yeah. Um they they do mention uh when they're dissecting drill drill head tunneler. uh tunneler that uh Tyler? He... Tunneler. Oh. Our bad. Well, you know, <laughs> he did, you know, he did stumble in the hallway outside the bedroom door. Yeah. And she did call it to him. And there was fear in her voice. And she pulled the covers tighter. He pressed against the door. And he was going to be with her tonight. I was following you. <laughs> I was like, I was like, some of that did happen. And I was like, wait, that didn't happen. And then as soon as you said, I'm like, ah, oh, you're making Tony's references. <laughs> that worked most of the way through. <sighs> <sighs> Jesus. And that song is called Drillhead. By the toadies. <laughs> and it's actually who this character is based off of. <laughs> Even though the, the movie came out like six or seven years earlier. They're collecting brains to make the goo. But a group of paranormal investigators show up or skeptics. They say they're with a government research, a government group that researches paranormal stuff. So I guess yeah. they're they're government paid skeptics who go and debunk stuff or try and get evidence on it. I don't know. It's kind of like they never a, talked about what was going on in that place in the first place. Well, they did. They said that the guy for uh, uh, Ron White from the last movie was the only survivor, and that he went and signing up in a in psych ward or whatever because that's one of the other notes. It's like, why do these bad sequels always have to undo the happy ending for the protagonist in the last movie? Uh, so he ended up in a psych ward, and I guess the woman who owned the place and brought the dead dog back to life at the end of the first movie, I guess she doesn't own it anymore. Did she go crazy too? Uh, the- yeah, I don't know. Uh, so the paranormal investigators are there. Uh, so the paranormal investigators are there. Yes, and they said key don't work. Well, my notes. They they bring in a psychic and the psychic uh immediately like is like I saw two puppets in my room and then runs out. And they're like, where? And they go upstairs with the cameras and zoom in on a couple of rag dolls that ain't doing shit. Um they someone broke someone broke the Maltese Falcon when they weren't in the room. Um but like almost immediately after that, the psychic's like, Oh, look, I'm getting the fuck out of here because we're all gonna die. Like, I'm gonna go pack my shit and get the hell out of here. I'm creeped out, which is Honestly, the right choice. Yeah. But then she gets, Pinhead like grabs her ankle and then she falls over is immediately immobilized. Yeah. Like she's like one of those fainting goats. Yeah. Like she just seized up and fell over. (laughs) And then Jester puts a rag over her mouth and they take the time to drag her out. Like they're going to hold her hostage. They're going to use it for something. She's going to be alive later. Which again, spoiler alert, we just see her dead. Later on in the dumb way, or they're just dragging her dead also body the somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And other than that, yeah, there's no, no she's there's yeah, this is completely useless as far as the whole just tying her up and dragging her off bit goes. Yeah. Also, the painter investigators had cameras and everything all over the place. Nobody decided let's roll back the tape a little bit and just see like where she went. Where she went, yeah. Maybe we'll find two little critters dragging her down the hallway. I don't know. Just a, well, yeah, cause a they wild imme- idea. That immediately is what they do when they're when, in the next scene. Yeah, they do that next. Like So apparently the psychic lady doesn't matter, whatever. We're glad she's gone. I, oh, we forgot to talk about the granny panty shot. Oh, yeah. This is uh, my favorite part of the whole movie. Yeah, as they're, dra- <laughs> as they're dragging this like 60-year-old actress out of the room. 
We have to get an upskirt shot of her in her panties as she's flailing around. Because that's when she decides to fight back is when Pinhead's dragging her out of the room. Finally, she decides to throw a show some life instead of just laying there and let herself get tied up. But, like, I would be like, listen, guys, I'm, like, 70. Have a little bit of dignity and let me wear a pantsuit or something. Mm-hmm. We don't need to see your granny panty. So, yeah, all right. So, we've got the, the paranormal investigators, which is um, we've got Dime Store Gerard Butler. Yep. We've got Slutty Courtney Cox. Yep. We've got Bargain Basement Uma Thurman and her brother, uh, Bargain Basement Alex Winter slash the human personification of Boomhauer. Yeah. Just like Boomhauer, yeah. He looks just like Boomhauer. And, or, but he kind of looks and acts and moves like Alex Winter, but yeah. more stretched out. Uh, he's acting kind of dickish, and she mentions he's got an alcohol problem. And then later on, we see him in bed with, like, setting down, like, one of those giant, like, sifters of wine or whatever. It's mm-hmm. like, how do you drink? Like, he's already laying down. He's already pulling down. You can't drink like that laying down. Trust me, I've tried. I would be funny if he had, like, a crazy straw. He goes, like, the glasses, the circles on the eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. he's drinking it that way. He's laying in bed, and this is almost immediately after they kidnap the psychic lady, and yep. she says she's going to book. And Tundler runs in and just drills him in the damn face. Right in the head, yeah. So, uh, Boomhauer and Uma Thurman are brother and sister. And they, before they even gets tunneled in the face, they just like, oh, there was something on the screen because we got uh, slutty Courtney Cox was distracting Gerard Butler, who was supposed to be monitoring the cameras. And they rewind a little bit and see Tundler just standing in the doorway and runs inside with their look right at the camera, then go in. Yeah, give it, give it one of these, ah, <laughs> and then go inside, you know? It, it was actually, it was, it goes back to, that's something I do like about this movie, though. It's something we, we complained about in the first movie. It's like, these are like giant two foot, three foot tall puppets. Like, they're not, they're like the size of like little people. They're not, they're not menacing in any way. Well, it's not that. It's just they're not, Small. they're not discreet. Yeah. Yeah. You can see them coming. They're the size of a house cat, at least, like you said last time, Gaden. Like, you're going to notice a house cat running around. Yeah. So then, so then they're like about this. They're they're seen almost immediately. First thing the psychic lady is like, there's two of them in my damn room. And then immediately after that, they catch one on videotape. Didn't take long at all to notice that these things were here. Yep. What was stupid is, you know, staying there. And then, because Tundler runs inside and drills uh, Alex Winter in the face. And then... Uh, Gerard Butler runs in and throws Tundler against the wall and smashes him with the lamp a couple of yeah. times. No more Tundler for the rest of the movie because then they start dissecting him. And that's yep. what you're saying. They're like, he's low on juice that we should know nothing about. I, I should say that because they they did do a little exposition saying that they know about the Andre Toulon and all that good stuff. Just like the notes from Alex uh, or uh, Ron White from the first movie. Yeah. I think they were kind of investigating his claims and things like that. Yeah. So. They knew all about the case, as it were. Mm. So we get a couple of like obligatory death scenes in this, where we get um, outside of just the the psychics, we had them like kind of traveling. So they needed brains, and one of the things he was, you know, Andre Toulon's like, we need human brains, and apparently the puppets they set up early on, their the psychic as she was coming to the hotel got lost and met um, the bum from Back to the Future and his Kathy wife Bates. Kathy Bates, yeah, uh, living on their farm. They mentioned that some their hogs and their donkey have been mutilated. So the puppets have been stealing animal things because apparently they're apparently, even though they're immortal, like, uh, invincible puppets walking terribly far is just too much of a fucking hassle. So like they're humans around. I oh, know. Fuck this shit. Uh, I guess we'll just use this. Go. Even though there were two human beings living in that place, they could have killed, which they go back and do. They later. go, they do later. Yeah. They go back like, Oh wait, there's people here. So yeah, the leech woman kills the the bum in his sleep, and then the Kathy Bates gets up and and burns her and throws her in the thing, and and, the, and the, eventually you know she's killed too. But like something that's revealed in the in the the third movie, another thing that this movie is just batshit insane about is um, Andre Toulon at some point in time decides that Uma Thurman is the reincarnation of his wife, and that rather than give the serum to the puppets he's just going to put her in one of those dummy bodies with him and they can both live forever. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and that's probably why the puppets turned. Yeah, that is why the puppets turned because he double-crossed them. But, I, and we'll get into the, that <laughs> when we get to the end of it, like why that's 
that's dumb also and how that doesn't really work out either. But one of the things we find in the next, in the second, in the next movie is that I said, you know, there's a spirit, a person actually inhabiting all these dolls, Mm -hmm. each doll and the person inhabiting leech woman, the one that just got burned in the fire that Andre Chalon's like, Oh, another sacrifice. It's so sad that one of you die, but it'll be okay. We'll, we'll all be good. You know, once we make it through this, Mm -hmm. the person inhabiting leech woman was his wife. In the original one? In the third movie, because the, the third, third movie, one. The third movie's a prequel. Everything in this movie is just backwards for what we learn later and what will become kind of canon. But what we do get is we get the origin of the serum, which is him going to Egypt and getting it from some mystic, which is something that continues on. We got the introduction of the Mephisto doll, which we do, I think, comes back later on. I don't know. It made enough of an impression that they made a toy out of it, and I bought the damn thing. So <laughs> there is that. Um and then this movie was directed by the effects artist from the first movie. So we actually got, I think it's a split second, but it's probably the best effect shot in any puppet master movie. And that's when, um, eventually, he yeah, he kills a uh, dime store, Gerard Butler, and then goes after Courtney, uh, Courtney, Cox, slutty yeah. Courtney Cox. And when he jumps off the bed and just starts slashing or whatever, <laughs> Best effects shot in the movie. And best really best effects well, yeah. shot in the entire series, I gotta say. It's split second, but it, it's it's definitely worth just looking at just because it looks cool. And I was well, something we 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 stopped because we kind of derailed talking about the love scene earlier. Mm-hmm. Uma Thurman and Flash Gordon had their love scene, but Courtney Cox is the one who has to show the titties off. Yeah. In her granny pants, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she gets up because, like, they have the love the scene ones. between the two of them, which has got no nudity in it, which is fine. We didn't need nudity in the first one. We don't need in that. And then they cut to Courtney Cox in bed with her top off. She rolls over before, you know, we get just a nice shot of them. Then she stands up with her 1990s high-waisted underwear that came up to under her armpits. And, yeah, it was like, so she gets the love scene and you get the nudity. All right, I guess that's the fair trade-off. Yeah, and her underwear looked a lot like the one the old lady was wearing, too. They were probably shared. They only they could only afford one set of underwear. All the rest well, of the no, no, no. underwear is usually kind of three packs, don't they? Oh yeah, sure. They just yeah. bought like a Hanes yeah. set and just passed them out. I guess that third pair was on Uma Thurman. Yeah, <laughs> just in case. Just in case. They they show the flashback to Egypt. They kind of make it like you know he doesn't really want to take the magic potion, and he's just like I'm not a sorcerer. You know, I'm I'm a master craftsman. And his wife's like, like, and the sorcerer is like. Oh, but you'll be poor if you don't do this because technology is changing. People are interested in your marionettes and you don't want to be poor, do you? And his wife's like, do it for the children. But really the implication is she's greedy and she wants him not to be poor and they want to have money. <clears throat> I don't know why they made everyone such mustache twilling vir- villains in this. And like, <laughs> there's happens a lot again of later that. On. Yeah, there's a lot of that with most of these characters. But like his, his wife, again, uh, was a very sweet, selfless woman who put herself in the way of a bullet. And got killed for it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, or, got, or tried to fight off an SS guy and got shot for it. So, I mean, she's, yeah, their their personifications of this one, even though this one comes first, is just kind of, I, I don't like the idea of Andre Toulon being the bad guy because they didn't establish that in the first movie, you know? He was kind of sympathetic and talked about the puppets in the way that they're portrayed in the third, fourth, and fifth movies and things like that. Again, it was this movie just was doing its own damn thing. But, we got a couple of cool moments out of it, like a little child being burned alive by the puppet. We didn't get to see it. We got the implication, and that was enough because that kid was a little shit. And yeah, he it. deserved it. Yeah. I've never been rude. I've never wanted a child to die more. Well, yeah, she ends up getting captured um, by uh, Hei Tulan, who kind of reveals himself, and she's like, "I already know who you are," which is ridiculous. Why the fuck would she know? Oh yeah, because she's got the. Ca- I forgot. Never mind. She's got the whole case study on this thing. Yeah, she had the whole case study. Why would you guess that this dead guy brought himself to life unless you bought hook, line, and sinker that this thing was all true, which you I guess you kind of would. You see, saw the puppets, right? Yeah, so, you already saw know, the puppets. Fair enough. So. fair enough. I retract my complaint. <laughs> it makes sense. This whole movie did, though, especially those scenes where she was tied up and they had, like, the harsh lighting on the eyes and the yeah. shadow. Totally looked like a Tales from the Crypt. It, it did. It did look like the nine. Like Even the like their 90s. delivery, their lines too during those scenes, it seemed really like early nineties HBO made for TV movie. Yeah, right? yeah. This whole thing did have a look of a made for TV, which honestly for Full Moon is about as good as it's gonna get. So, and again, they tried with the stop motion. 
Uh, I think this was the director's first time directing something because he was an effects guy. So, I mean, there was not... Uh, he tried something that with that one black and white shot if it wasn't just a complete accident. I don't, I don't know. That's the thing I'm most curious about because that was really random. Yeah, yeah. Again, if, I don't think it would have been as jarring if there had been other... Th- things like that throughout the film other little artistic elements or stylistic choices which there was none of it was just alone on its own little island and it was a cool shot <laughs> i would put that as a picture up somewhere it was neat you know him and the him staying there almost looking like a, a play doctor against that background yeah and stuff. it was neat looking it just where the fuck did that come from did who decided to make an art house film all of a sudden <laughs> he's like yeah let's do that no it's not Next. But he captures the girl and he's going to put himself in. They put people shows her these bodies that they're going to put themselves into. And he puts himself one for into him one, and of one for her. And- <clears throat> yeah, his and hers creepy ventriloquist, life size ventriloquist dummies. The, the, the teeth were fake. Like the, everything. The, the rest of the mouth bad. was the real thing. And like watching the normal human tongue moving inside of like the, what's clearly like wooden mouth weird it was weird it was weird but he puts himself into this new body and he's going to forcibly put uma thurman into the other one so that he and his wife because he thinks she's the reincarnation of his wife they can be together meanwhile flash gordon is tearing ass through the hotel and just whipping the shit out of every puppet he comes across and throwing it across (laughs) the room whipping puppet ass left and right until he gets up to the the hotel and uh, gets up to toulon's lair yeah uh but, you know, in which case, like, and then Toulon puts a knife, like, stops trying to force feed her goo and instead puts a knife to, like, all cut her. It's like, no, you won't. Yeah, no, you're not. You just, you, no, you've got. That, that's apparently your wife. So, no, you're not. Well, he's got to feed, because he, he slit his own throat to do the thing. He's he's he got to slit her throat, that slit her throat of that body to transfer to the other one. But I don't think he should drink any of the goo because he's no. just, she spits it out. And he's like, we only got one gobble of that crap left, right? Now, keep that in mind. I only got one gobble of that shit left. <clears throat> And he's like telling the guys, all the puppets, he's like, sorry guys, it's not enough to go around for the rest of y'all, but you know, I told you, you know, your sacrifice isn't in vain. You gave me my wife back. I appreciate that. You know, y'all all die, but I got my wife back. Thank you guys. Uh, Cause I forgot. Yeah. She spit <coughs> it out all over Blade. Yeah. And Blade's yeah, like, Blade, like, looked at him, like you waste gotta be that kidding shit. me. Yeah. How dare you waste that? We don't want your time. We'll... That's what yeah, they all said. He was like, didn't... that's two months right there. Yeah. I didn't even think about that. So yeah, that makes perfect sense. why they'd be pissed off. Yeah. Yeah. Spent a lot of time trying to get that stuff. Yeah. But they turn the bad that. guy, kill the bad guy, and Flash Gordon and uh, Uma Thurman completely forget that they have a dead mother and a dead sibling because they just want to. Oh, yeah, because the dead sibling that got his head drilled out, they just put him in the freezer. Yeah, he is still in there. Next and he's to still the in that freezer, yeah, yeah, because, yeah. He... Right next to the Salisbury steaks. Yeah. Just hanging out there in the, in the freezer. In the Hungry Man dinners. <laughs> down the bottom rack yeah the bottom rack yeah well you don't want him to drip anything no no they might need to get to those vegetables or something later probably so. want to put a pan underneath them unless you got one of those floors with a drain on the bottom they probably do I imagine they would they probably tell, would yeah. yeah makes sense <laughs> <laughs> I just still I find it so ridiculous how quickly they just forget that they had relatives or well, that these people like just died. I thought it was funny that the immortal body that he wanted to transfer them all into, like they smash the like when the puppets turn on him, they like cut him and he starts just shooting goo out everywhere. And then like they first of all, he's got these eyes that aren't gonna fit in anywhere. No. He shoots goo out as soon as like a like a uh, uh, nicked fire hose the second he's he's cut. And then like as soon as he falls down, they hit his hand with a hammer and just smashes the whole like thing just shatters. That's yeah, porcelain. Yeah, it just shatters. Like Duke's hand from Happy Gilmore was more was more sturdy. Like yeah, yeah, it's terrible. So I don't know how immortal these bodies exactly when it were. It's like Seems all like right, we fragile. can we can live forever as long as we don't go up and down stairs. So after they turn on him and uh, Uma Thurman and Flash Gordon, just I don't know, fuck off, protagonist wrap up. Yeah, I, I did Happily not pay attention after for those two. Yeah, whatever. Didn't pay attention. Doesn't matter. They leave the series and the movie forever and who cares. And then we cut to the reanimated corpse of his mother, I guess, or what did they put, or was that the puppet? It was the that puppet was the, body. That was the other puppet body. It was the yeah. other, it was the female puppet body, but who did they put in it? 
that the was the the mother. Yeah, they put the mother in there. They put the mother, that the one psychic that, lady. Yeah, the one that they forgot about, the granny panty lady yeah. from earlier. So, why does she become a mustache twirling villain once she got put into the puppet body? Because she's driving with the puppets, <sighs> and again, like you said, she was dressed like a, a preschool parachute. Yeah, and she's in like a VW micro bus that says like you know. Aunt Kathleen's puppet show puppet show for kids. We promise you won't get raped here or whatever on the side. Free puppy dogs and hugs and bad touches. Like, um, and then she like lays out this, like, like it's worse than a Bond villain. She's sitting there in torches in the front. She, she looks at him. She's like, let's go entertain children at troubled schools for troubled children. And we can have some beer of fun with them. And even if someone does see something spooky, who will believe these disturbed children? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Several questions here about this scene. Because first of all, it goes nowhere. We never pick this thread up again. It is abandoned. It is forgotten about. It is done. So why did she become evil and decide she wanted to go screw with children? Why the hell would the puppets who dug Toulon up after they could presumably have been running around this whole time. Yeah. They could have dug him up at any time. They decided that, oh, shit, we're going to die. We need him to, this guy is the guy who can, we can probably go find, like, instead of going and trying to find some average person to just, because they need a set of hands or whipping it up themselves, Mm -hmm. they dug up the guy who could make the serum, right? Makes sense. One thing a serum left, they took mom and put her in the woman body, right? Does mom know how to make more serum? Yeah, they didn't go into that whatsoever. Because if not, the puppets are fucked in six years or however long it was between now and then because Toulon shot him himself in the 40s. That was probably the last time they got a bump of serum. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they make reference to it being 50 years. You saw he said Kim's called it half a century. <clears throat> so this was shot in 90. Let's say it happened in 46, being generous. 48, being even more generous. They got, what, six to eight years left before they just they, they go away or they stop being active. Yeah. Where the juice runs out. Their energizer battery needs to be replaced. Yeah, you figure they would have, I don't know, unless they used most of it for themselves and then well, it was popped like, off for her, but they didn't show anything, so you really don't know. It, they made it seem like they just put all of it into her and happily ever after the end. Yeah, so I don't I don't know. I, I you 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 uh you kind of you kind of cut off your nose to spite your face there attacking Andre Toulon, I suppose. But I guess <laughs> if it wasn't gonna make you any more anyway, it didn't really matter. So Yeah. Because you could have been like, you know, take it for your wife. That's fine. But we got time to make more. Just make more. You know? Yeah. We'll help you. If this was part of the deal, you want to add this to your deal. If you want Darth Vader us, man, that's fine. But don't like, don't Han Solo us in the process. Okay? While I didn't like it, I also didn't hate it. The movie in general? Yeah. Just in general. It kind of sits in that gray, meh area for me. Again, as I keep saying, the... The first two movies in this series are fun because of the puppets and the animation and puppet kills, especially when you're a teenager Mm -hmm. and before all the spectacles start making things less fun to watch. But the next three, I think, especially because there's a, a, the same actor playing Andre Toulon all the way through. There's a clear cut uh, continuity that kind of really establishes the lore of puppet master. They're all just better movies. I think if I remember it correctly, we could get in there and watch them. They could be just fucking terrible. Like only, these were only one way to find out, I guess. Right. Stay tuned. I, uh, I don't know. The only time I was really ever just absolutely disappointed was by the time I got to curse puppet master and they were literally taking scenes from them. Like that effect shot of him jumping off the bed. That was, that just cut into curse of puppet master. Mm. And like one of the few pu- shots they have of their own, it's like literally like the puppet, like someone's holding the puppet's legs under the, th- under the table while they, Oh God! Walk it forward, like it's it's bad. Like we we, we could do that with my 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 blade doll here, man. That was Puppet Master too, and it was. I think it's more entertaining than the first movie, though. It was entertaining. I'll give it that. Yeah, I mean, again, it, this one's batshit insane. It doesn't. None of the plot strings, none of the personalities match the characters, uh, as we'll come to know them. None of the plot strings go anywhere. It's. It's pure insanity as far as that goes, but we get we get Torch for the first time, who I keep forgetting was introduced before Six Shooter because Six Shooter becomes much much more prevalent. I think later on the because I don't know if Torch ever comes back. This might have been his. 
eh, they may all be there by the fourth and fifth one too. I don't think he's in the third one. Hmm. Uh, anyway, I'm digressing <laughs> again and again and again. These movies are these movies are fun and they're they're like the Nightmare on Elm Street. They're just a big part of my childhood or my teenage years and things like that. This one's worth watching again because of the 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 Doctor Doom mummy and uh, his bad vaguely European accent that's supposed to be German. It changes, yeah. Yeah, uh, Tundler is uh, you know obviously uh, not Tundler. Uh, Torch is a cool new addition. Yeah, Blade doesn't do a whole lot in this one though, unfortunately. And we actually do get to go to a different location. I mean, it's a Rednecks rundown shack, but. It still is, you know, more locations in this one hotel like we normally get. Right. I do recommend this movie if you like the series or if you want to get into the series. I recommend watching the first two, but don't give up. <laughs> it's it's hard to do that. It's hard to say, like, watch the first two movies in a series and be like, all right, this, this series is terrible. I don't want to watch anymore. It's like, no, just get through them. The first one is just kind of slow and boring, but it doesn't, doesn't do anything that's going to hurt later continuity. The second one is just, this one is just weird. Yeah, it's a weird one. As far as, yeah, the rest of the lore and the story goes. But a lot of deaths happen really quickly early on. And then we just get uh, just batshit insane plots. Yeah. About bringing yourself back to life with evil eggnog and front lo- frontal lobes of children's brains. And <laughs> I I don't know, man. This is what happens when you when you write a script while huffing paint thinner. Yeah, it doesn't really work out too well. Well, well it, I mean, it worked out. It works out. It works out sometimes. I mean, that's how Fast and the Furious movies were written. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for joining. Can you get any thoughts on this before we get out of here? No, I do enjoy that it was uh, a lot quicker in, as far as the deaths go and stuff like that. Yeah, it got into the action a lot quicker. Yeah, and yeah. It, it helped the pace move along a little bit better. It did. So this one felt sh- shorter didn't drag nearly as much. The first one kind of drags. Thank you so much guys for joining us here on this episode of Ramble on Movie Review. Uh, Please like, please subscribe, check us out on Instagram, Facebook, all that shit. We don't actually post on there, but apparently at the end of these videos, that's the thing you're supposed to say. Um, Final thoughts? Nope. Do the thing. All right. Play me out, Johnny, and uh, say hi to your mother for me. and a cape you would have to have custom made because nobody sells those things. Yeah, I can buy that somewhere. (laughs) Villains R Us or something.